Hello. So today we're gonna be talking about DIY witchcraft, the importance of do it yourself, how sometimes do it yourself not so much. Why not carve a pumpkin? Because if we're talking about crafts, you should be doing craft, right? Anyway, carve with me, find something crafty, do it, I don't care. Or just enjoy the fun. Something I've just realized in general with witchcraft, as we all talk about it, is the idea of that certain witchcraft needs to be done ourselves. You know, the idea of always putting spells are better when our own emphasis is put on it. Things in general just turn out so much better if we are the ones doing it. Our own intention is into it, and like I've talked about with words and stuff before, we all have our own meanings when it comes to words, our own associations with a word, you know, our own experiences, things of this nature. And so it would be better if, you know, you had your own little spin on it, just it, it makes it more palpable in that sense. I'm attempting to make a pentagram into this pumpkin, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but... Or maybe, can I make it a pentacle? Am I that crafty? I might be. Might is a very big word here. And see if I horribly mess it up or not. I, I realize I loved a lot because I am a crafty person, artistic person, etc. and so forth, is the idea that the more you do your stuff yourself, the more palpable or powerful it is. Which I definitely agree with in some senses. And I really enjoy being crafty in general. So I find, of course, this works well for me, right? As an artist, if I draw something, I immediately love it a lot, like a huge amount more than say if I just picked it up from some random shop or something that I didn't really care too much about. I'm like, oh, that was cool, that was pretty, but if I drew it and I put it in my house somewhere, I really, really appreciate it a lot more. And I've noticed this a lot too with um, home improvement stuff as well. My parents have always been the type of do-it-yourselfers. I always joke around with them and saying that like, when I think of my childhood, I think of sawdust. Uh, that is the first smell that comes to mind because literally there was never a point in time that I remember that my house wasn't under construction. And I mean, not like small constructions. I mean like, my mother, I would come home and frequently she'd be like up to her knees in plaster because she decided the bathroom wall needed to come down and that the bathroom needed to be extended. And so my dad would do the electrical stuff or whatever. Um, there used to be, I had a huge fire in my house when I was younger, half of my house burnt down. And so they took it upon themselves to also include along with that some of a kitchen remodel. Basically, I just, I've been surrounded by that stuff. So like when stuff got done in the house, it was, oh no, we are going to do this ourselves. We're gonna tile the bathroom ourselves. We're gonna paint it ourselves. And I got to do that as a kid too. I got to paint my walls. I got to um, pick my decorations. And that really helped me to one, express myself and also understand the, I guess the amount of effort that comes in with stuff too, right? I remember at one point in one of my apartments, I was busy painting the walls and stuff because I had one of those lovely landlords that let you do that. And I remember one of my roommates said to me that I didn't really take pride in my home because I was a messy person. And while I can kind of understand where they're coming from now, at the time I remember being really pissed off at that statement because I had taken the time to paint the walls, I had taken the time to, you know, get a new bathroom sink and install it, I had taken the time to put some backsplash up in the kitchen. Like I had taken some serious effort to, you know, style it in a certain way. And now suddenly, because I didn't do the dishes within a timely fashion, I didn't have pride in my home. I was very insulted by that. I think that's what a lot of like do-it-yourself does, right? It's a lot of just kind of going back to the old ways is that, hey, when things need to get done, it was a do-it-yourself. There wasn't a contractor you could call or you could run to Target and go get a thing. Like, you had to make it yourself if you wanted it, do it yourself. So definitely think there's a huge power in that. And when it comes to witchcraft, I see that as well, right? Like, I've spoken before about how much important I find cooking is now because it has a magical context to it. I know the magical part of the herbs. That's always some of the fun part, right? I'm definitely gonna be cooking these pumpkin seeds later. So when it comes to doing certain things magic-wise, writing my own spells and stuff, that seemed like a natural transition. But suddenly all the other parts of the witchcraft, the do-it-yourself stuff, I don't know if I naturally transitioned as easily or if I even really want to do some of that and some of the pressure and the insecurities that come along with that, I guess, as well, because partially there is this now idea of like, oh, it's more palpable, which means now if it does, if you don't do it yourself, it's not palpable. And I had this feeling with oils and things of that nature, right? Like knowing that if I bought an oil or something from someone else, well, it had their intention into it. And I also had to put my intention into it for it to work for me. But 
maybe their intention was more palpable than mine or it wouldn't work as well for me as if I had made the oil myself. And so I was getting into starting to do a bunch of oils and create certain magical tools myself. You know, I tried to make a wand myself. I tried to do a lot of magical oils mostly. I tried to make an ink once, that didn't turn out well. And some of the failures I really felt as a witch when I couldn't do things correctly, right? I remember feeling very failure at, had a bunch of like insecurities over my cooking for a very long time because I didn't know how to cook. I did not have what I would call cooking common sense that seems like a multiple people would seem to have that I like I did, just didn't have it I didn't know, know things as simple as like ground beef shouldn't be cooked rare ever like it's not the same as steak there's qualities of beef didn't know that um I definitely gave myself food poisoning multiple times so like cooking was not a very uh easy skill for me to learn and to take on and I only very recently last couple of years started to really get into it and so when there are certain things that don't come easily for me or just seem like so much effort and I'm not really sure what the result is when it comes to like magical oils um, trying to make a magical ink by myself and seeing that mold over was like troubling, you know, um, certain herb blends. Trying to grow a magical garden so I could have my own herbs and know that like my intention went into growing those plants really mattered to me. But then suddenly the garden died off because it's really hard to keep a proper herb garden in Arizona if you aren't really good at gardening. Like that's, it's not as easy as like put it outside, the sky will water it for you. No, you have to like have a lot of memory and stuff with that. And that just wasn't in my bag, like I couldn't do it. So in that, I realized, well, maybe there's some things I don't have to do it myself. Maybe there's some things that I can just purchase and that is fine. Uh, and there are some things that maybe one day I will do myself, but it doesn't have to now and that doesn't necessarily increase or negate the magic per se. Even if I really do love doing certain things myself. When it comes to magical oils and casting spells with them and things of this nature, I purchase those now from other witches. When you have to do things all by hand in a way, like handcrafted, handmade, that type of deal. That stuff really, I feel it has an extra oomph to it because each step of the process has a good amount of care put into it by a person. And the intention of a witch taking time and doing all those things step by step, I, I feel that uh, as I buy witch products from other witches that I pick up. Doing it myself, if I can do it, I value. But there's other things that, I don't know, sometimes I can, sometimes I don't. Like one of the things that I do a lot is I purchase candles from anywhere and everywhere because candles are accessible in a lot of different places. You know, it's not always a, uh, sometimes I get them from like Bath and Body Works to freaking a uh, Yankee candle to just picking up random tapered candles at Michael's or whatever else. Other times I buy them from witches or from my local metaphysical shop because I know that those specific candles were handmade and were very much have the magical intention put into them. And I'm also starting to get into making my own candles now because I kind of always wanted to do that and I like and I love candle magic. That's something that I really dove into in my practice as a whole. So it would make sense that I would attempt to do that myself and I haven't attempted it yet. I actually no, I attempted it once last year around Maybon and it was kind of a hot mess. Like I don't think I did it quite right. I didn't have the proper tools. I was just trying to like consolidate a lot of the wax that I had at the time. And it kind of just made a big gigantic mess and it ruined one of my sauce pots. But it wasn't horrible. It wasn't horrible. But I'm hoping if I actually get a book and learn how to do it properly, like it might turn out better. But yeah. Sometimes I feel like, you know, store-bought witchcraft, like, what was it, that meme that goes around here? It's like, if you can't summon uh, the fires of hell directly, like, store-bought is fine. Because <laughs> I do think there's a little bit of pretense that comes along with it, too, right? Where it's like, oh, well, if you're not that crafty of a person, you can't be a witch. Like, there's that, there's that pretense, right? If you didn't make it yourself, it can't possibly have the potency. Um, if you didn't create that candle, if you didn't make that oil, if you didn't write that spell yourself, then there is no way it could have any sort of real power. And I just don't 100% agree with that uh, because one, I don't know everyone's path. Two, I think that would entail the fact that you put in power to your creation, to the craft, right? There are certain times where if something gets so hard and so frustrating that I know now that the energy that I'm putting into something, the end result of it is going to be frustration. Like it's not necessarily going to be an easy ride of something. 
sometimes it's going to just be a hot mess of anger and aggravation or whatever else right it's not going to be fun anymore the fun and the happiness and the joy that goes into the act of creating something i should be should be part of the intention if something becomes so difficult or so frustrating or so like taxing is it really a good intention anymore or is the intent that of doing something yourself now been negated in some sense or may cause a negative reaction in the spell because there's a negative energy associated with the creation of the thing and also if you don't believe creation has any power like what if you get joy and a huge amount of bursts of energy from purchasing from other people who do create or from purchasing even from like big stores in general like big box stores you're like you're excited in the collection of the things to create stuff for your craft you know what i mean like oh hey it's because i didn't cast the iron into a cauldron myself negating the power of my cauldron that i used no there was huge amount of joy in me buying that tiny little thing and there's huge amount of power and potency that comes from me using it in my craft whenever i feel the need to so it's definitely a mix i like adding more diy elements to it just because i'm naturally a creative person and the act of creation itself is normally a very fun and playful thing as long as i don't get too serious about it and as long as i do a little research beforehand so it's not a huge amount of frustration but this actually have to be and i have to think i remind myself of that that it's okay if i didn't make something myself it's okay if something isn't of my own energy from beginning to end it can have other people elements into it you know more generic energy of just being in it and it's fine the intent of me putting it in at spell time, at ritual time, is really where it matters. Another thing I'll mention is the idea also of if it's done yourself, but it's not perfect, how empowering that still is, right? Like this pumpkin is not gonna be carved with expertise carving. It's gonna be a hot freaking mess. But you know what's gonna be fun when I see it glowing with a little tea light candle in it? Is the idea that I made it. The idea that that came entirely from me and my creation. And that is something that I do really value when it comes to certain levels of getting stuff done, right? The idea that something doesn't have to be 100% perfect to still have potency in it. That's one thing that DIY kind of gets you to. There's still a pride in the fact that you crafted it yourself. There is still a excitement in that. That you put two and two together and figured out how to get something done without the help of anybody else in completing a task all the way to its end without having to worry about its perfection too much. That is something that I find is of great value and that you find pretty easily when you do things yourself, when you craft something yourself. And the pride in knowing that you can do something too, I think is interesting because again, do I need to do this? make candles myself? No, I can go to Target and buy a bunch of them. There's something about knowing that I can do it myself. It gives a certain self-confidence that I didn't necessarily think I had before. You know, a certain amount of self-reliance, of a bit of ego stroking, I guess. But also kind of like just knowing that in a baser survival thing, like I feel that a lot when I paid off my car and like I own my car out right now. That was one of my big things I really wanted to do this year was to own my car. And it was probably my first adult purchase that I made entirely by myself. Um, it was before I completely paid for my apartment uh, by myself without assistance from my parents. You know, they would give me money for food every once in a while, et cetera and so forth. Like I wasn't entirely existing on my own without them. And my car was my first thing that I paid for all by myself. I took care of it, I did all the things, it is mine by every sense of the word. And there was a huge amount of pride in that. And I realized that that same pride had come out a lot when I had painted my room by myself for the first time. When I had, you know, cooked my first meal that was edible. Even if it wasn't entirely tasty, like it didn't matter. It was the fact that, hey, I did the thing. No one else helped me with it. Or even if there was a little bit of help in it, like I still did the thing myself. It wasn't 100% perfect or gorgeous, but I did the thing and it got done. That if no one else was there, it didn't matter. The main thing that mattered was that, hey, something needed to get done and I could do it. Self-sufficiency gave me a really great boost and made me feel powerful. Things can happen just with little old me putting some effort in and executing a plan. I think that's an important aspect to remember with DIY, especially with witchcraft, because we are we're putting our will into it. It's our will alone. 
and maybe the will of others helps you know a will of another witch helping us by making an oil making a candle blessing something for us but our will in casting a spell is paramount not that bad i don't think <laughs> so yeah this is my pumpkin it's not perfect it's not gorgeous per se but it's pretty much what i wanted and i did it my damn self and that's kind of how i feel this kind of conclusion all comes to right is the idea that it doesn't have to be perfect and the pride in doing something entirely yourself knowing you're self-sufficient knowing that you can act and something might happen even without the help of anybody else or you know with the small help of somebody else that your will helped bring a something to completion bring something into existence I think it's important to remember and I think that's a really great part about do it yourself with witchcraft but it doesn't have to be you know sometimes it's just it's there if you want to do it and it's there if you don't and even if you don't you can cast this out as well just like with everything else so comment down below what do you think about do it yourself witchcraft and all of that and how do you feel about all those things and I guess I will see y'all tomorrow since this is part of Utober uh, stay in for the musical prettiness of this at nighttime. bye